I've decided I'm going to dust off my canoe and get in the water. The sea is almost completely calm today and it's really warm. It's probably about 17 degrees, I should think. So I'm gonna give my kayak a bit of a clean and get in there. It is currently pretty full of sand. So I've gotta get all of that out. <laughs> Are we gonna go out kayaking? Are we gonna go in the water and find seagulls? Stop of Arienzo because I've gone and put the GoPro right down the end there and I can't reach it. Holly loves it here. She's gone. <laughs> this is like the only place where she'll actually leave me and go far away from me. She's all the way up the end of the beach there now. <laughs> Good girl. I mentioned it in a few videos back when I was in England. I went swimming when I was in Bath and I really enjoyed just swimming up and down and doing laps. And I said I'd probably look into it here as a keep fit thing. Um, so I did. I went to the swimming pool. First of all, I went to the swimming pool back near my dad's house in England, which is a beautiful sports complex. And I asked um, how it works just to go swimming. And basically you pay five pounds and you go and swim. And that is it. You pay five pounds each time you go. Simple as that. Here, a little bit more complicated. So at the local pool, which I've got to say is not very pleasant. It's in one of those um, tent bubbles, which has been around probably since the 70s and is looking rather mouldy and brown. You have to pay 55 euro to um, join the club. Then you have to pay 30 euro for a medical certificate. Um, to prove that you're fit enough to swim and then you have to pay 50 euro a month and you're only allowed to swim once a week or I think the other choice was 90 euro a month and you're allowed to swim three times a week and that for me is not a good deal so I'm just going to stick to kayaking and climbing steps. to pick some spinach in the greenhouse but I've just walked in and it's a little bit overgrown in there. Hmm, not sure if I'm going to find any spinach amongst all of these stinging nettles. But yes, there is still some in here. I might have to do some weeding. Oh, this beautiful spinach has now re-emerged from beneath all the singing nettles and not my cat is playing hide and seek, aren't you? Right, I just got attacked by a particularly stinging, stinging nettle. Normally don't mind them, but that one really hurt. So stupidly I rolled my sleeves up, what an idiot. Um, so I'm gonna stop here. I think I've got enough spinach and I've had an idea of what I'm gonna make for lunch. But I need some mozzarella, so I'm gonna have to pop up to Montebatuso and get some, which means I can also take Holly for a walk at the same time. This one. I do miss having the car parked outside the front door. I was going to <laughs> give you some more book recommendations, but I'm too puffed out, so I'll do it on the way back down. Let's get some mozzarella and some pasta. See, um, 
Let's talk about books. I wanted to mention um, two books by Jan Mazzoni. Um, she's an English writer and she has written two books so far based on the Amalfi Coast. Both one is called Stones of the Madonna, which is a beautiful book set in Positano. Even though the word Positano is never actually mentioned, but it's set in Positano just before the Second World War. And it's an English lady who comes to live in Positano with her doctor husband. And it's just a really lovely story. And her other book is called Dreamland and Other Stories. It's a collection of short stories, all based on the Amalfi Coast in the 80s. Um, and it's really interesting because every story is completely different from each other. Um, so I would definitely recommend reading them if you like reading and if you like the Amalfi Coast. I'm in the pig house, even though we don't have a pig. I need one of those. And I need to go back into the greenhouse and pick some spinach. Okay, so for lunch today, it's quite unclear how many people are actually going to be eating here. At the moment, there's, I think there's going to be around six of us. I was going to get tortellini with ricotta and spinach, but when I got to the shop, they only had one packet, which would feed two people, and they didn't have three packets of anything at all, so we're going to have to mix it up. So I've got ravioli with zucca, and then they had one ravioli with speck, which is a type of cured ham. Uh, this is a recipe that I learned from my mum, many years ago. It's not a local traditional recipe, but it's still really good. I'm going to start by making up a simple pasta sauce, canned tomatoes and some garlic and leave that to reduce for a while. Very easy. I'm making another fennel and orange salad like I did on my birthday the other day, um, just because it is fennel season and it's orange season. When I made this the other day, I made a huge bowl of it and it got absolutely demolished. Everybody loves this. It's basically chopped up fennel, chopped up orange, olive oil, salt, pepper, and a splash of vinegar. Just a splash of that. Mix it all up. Mm, so good. Nice big mozzarella here which we're going to chop up into pieces. Grating some Parmesan to put on the top. I basically mixed everything together and I've stuck it under the grill to melt the cheese. No, è pasta sono ravioli doveva essere con ricotta e spinaci, però non ce l'avevano. Così è un misto di ravioli a specca e ravioli alla zucca. Eh, eh vabbè. Where are we going, Carlo? To Naples. Oh, we're going to Naples? Yeah. Are we? We're not going to Herculaneum? No. Oh, okay, we're going to Naples. I didn't know that. Basically, I gave him two choices this morning <laughs> and he chose the other one, I didn't realise. So. Update, we are going to Herculaneum because that's what I want to do and women always win. This is the main entrance to the ruins of Herculaneum, which in my opinion are way better than Pompeii. It's much more compact and smaller and much better preserved. These are the ruins here. If you want to go inside and see them better though, you have to go and get a ticket in the ticket office. We've just come out the main gate. We're walking straight up this main road here and we're going to turn left in a minute into the little markets. What do we do? We buy fish. If we buy fish, we go to the house. We buy fish and then we go to the house. You decide what you want to say. We have come here to find Resina, which is 
was famous as a second-hand clothes market um, it was huge in the 80s and 90s and when I first came here in 1999 somebody brought me here to see it and it was absolutely fascinating it closed down a few years later but um, me and Carla came here a few years ago and it started to reopen so we're gonna see if we can find it first signs that you found it are when you start to see clothes hanging in weird places it is. Spanish. <laughs> I'd rather to visit the school. Non sai mai. Non si sa mai, è vero? Magari ci sposiamo finalmente. Oh, five euros each. Carlo has just mentioned that he's having a hard time understanding the elder people that are talking. They speak the same dialect. Everybody here speaks Neapolitan dialect, which is the same as what Carlo speaks back home with his family. But it changes. It changes from town to town. No, diciamo non ogni posto che vai. Diciamo dopo un tot di distanza. La, la, il dialetto inizia a cambiare, diventa un'altra cosa. È così che per esempio tra Napoli e Roma passi dal, dal napoletano al romano. In mezzo parli un, un altro dialetto che non è né napoletano né romano. Sì, è ah, un misto di tutte e due. Sì, è un misto di tutte e due ed è, è difficile da capire quello che dicono perché lo parlano solo in quel posto. Sì, which makes it also really difficult to um, learn Italian because you never know whether people are speaking Italian to you or whether they're speaking Napolitan or Milanese or Veneziana or Siciliana. It could be anything, sì. you never know. Fai vedere questa gonna. Che prezzo può fare? 5 Questo euro. 5 euro. Eh? Dica Va tanto. Bene. Dica tanto. No, sì. diciamo Even though we have not got chickens yet, we have to stock up on chicken feed and things like that. So we're just going to do that now. I found it. We have just been given a tip to go to little Agriturismo farm just nearby because they might have some interesting choices of chickens. So we're going to go check that out now. We've just knocked on these guys' door and um, he's taking us around explaining all the different chickens he's got. Thanks. Really interesting. Well, he was very, very helpful, which is now a lot clearer. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get four normal chickens and see how we go with them. And once they've settled in and we know what we're doing, we might get a couple of special mini chickens for me. See, let me print this guy. No, it's cheap, it's not going to be carried out. It's going to be carried out. <laughs> hey, little one. So we think we have a chicken plan now. Um, we are now going to go and have some lunch and then we're going to go for a lovely walk somewhere and on the way back we might order some chickens. No, I have a little jar. Bad. We ate far too much, so we're now going to go for a lovely walk and walk it all off. In my life, I'm singing jazz all through the night. In my life, in my life, I've seen and done a lot of things that they could So we have ordered four chickens, they will be here on Wednesday next week. We've got some chicken feed, which matches my jumper, and we've got some sawdust. Sky's bringing the other little bits and pieces that we need. Well, 
it is good to know that Sky has her priorities straight. We are leaving for the airport in two hours time and she is currently in the garden in her pyjamas with her boyfriend building a bonfire. Nicola, hai il pantofoli di calo per casa? Um, Sky, do you have your suitcases packed? No. No? You know we're leaving in two hours time? Yeah. Okay, you're going to be ready to go? Hopefully. What is this bonfire for? This bonfire is for marshmallows. Marshmallows? Are you going to let me have one? Maybe. Yum. We are leaving in an hour's time and they are still outside in their pyjamas eating s'mores by the bonfire. She still hasn't packed her bags. Sky is now on her way up to the road. Her case is packed. God, I was in the shower. We're only 10 minutes late. And that is Sky gone until Easter. I'm just going to have to go back to England soon to see her. Without you, little miss. Oh, I'm sad. Oh, it is sad. The house will be empty now. And Daddy, I'm sorry.